Yeah. <laughs> You've been around here too much, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Brother Shake and Seymour Garrison. Amen. amen. Uh, she is a member of the Lancaster City Council. Amen. Rescinded in District uh, 4. Uh, they have two wonderful children, amen. Mason and Daisy. Mm -hmm. She is a member. She thinks she's a member of St. Paul in the Museum, <laughs> in the church, amen, <laughs> on the uh, path of leadership of Pastor Washington. Amen. Uh, she puts on here she's an adopted member, amen, amen. but I said she's a member of Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church. Amen. 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 She, uh, she holds an associate degree in, in paralegal studies. A bachelor's degree in criminal justice. She mm -hmm. completed one year at Charlotte School of Law. Mm -hmm. Graduated of the graduate of the paralegal studies and program at Charlotte School of Law. Mm -hmm. And she said she wanted to be saved. No, she said she was a child of God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This young lady is none other than Amen. City Councilman, Lancaster, Miss Missy Garrison. Amen. Amen. We pray now that she's not in Dublin City of Pratt. She's coming for us. Amen. She's Amen. already at the State Commission. We have to leave. She have another, another speaking engagement on this day. Amen. 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 Thank you, Miss. Come on, give her a hand as she comes. Amen. God bless you.
enforcing racial segregation in southern United States. These laws mandated racial segregation in all public facilities for African Americans. Uh -huh. And what that means is what you have today, back then, you couldn't do things such as go to school with whites. You couldn't go, you couldn't use the same restrooms as whites. Restaurants were segregated. Drinking fountains, public transportation, just to name a few. And that it was that in that time in Negro history's weeks, weeks launch, historian Carter Woodson decided that in order for the African American race to survive, it was essential to promote the intellectual knowledge of African American history throughout society. Carter's belief led to the expansion of Black History Week to Black History Month, which was proposed by leaders of the Black United States students at Kent State University in 1969. The first Black History Month took place one year later in 1970. Therefore, with the history being explained, we're going to take us down a trip of memory lane over the years up into the present. But as I speak about these individuals, I want you to ask yourself, do you think in today's society, we as a people are continuing the legacy of all the great pioneers who led the pathway for us? I'm going to say that again, and this is what I want you all to think about. Do you think that in today's society, we as a people are continuing the legacy of all the great pioneers who led the way for all of us? One of the first pioneers that I want to speak about is Sister Harriet Tubman, who was born into slavery in the 1820s. She escaped slavery at the age of 30. She was a leading figure in the anti-slavery movement, and she helped free over 70 slaves in the Underground Railroad in 1870. Those of you, I know you probably watched the movies, not sure how much the youth are involved, but back then, slaves couldn't even carry their family name. Families were separated. Children were sold. Women were raped. And we had no laws back then to protect us. Medgar Evers was another famous pioneer. He was also a civil rights activist in the 1950s who took a stand and spoke out against racism and segregation. He was assassinated one early morning on June the 12th, 1963, as he pulled into his driveway. Rosa Parks, on December the 1st in 1955, she refused to give up her seat because she was tired of giving in. When are we going to get tired of giving mm. in? Giving in to watching all of our brothers and sisters fall to drugs, alcoholism, gangs, gun violence, getting our kids into church, knowing to put God first in everything that they do. When are, we, when are we going to get tired as a people of letting things go? Mm. The next group of pioneers are the youngest. They were four little girls that were bombed in the 16th, 16th Street Baptist Church on September the 15th in 1963. Three of them, at the tender years of 14 years old, Aidy May Collins, Cynthia Wesley, <coughs> Carol Robinson, and 11-year-old Denise McNair. There are over 1,400 more black Americans murdered in two years by black-on-black -black crimes than African Americans that were lynched from 1882 to 1968. <coughs> I'm gonna say that again. We have over 1,400 more black Americans murdered by other blacks in two years than that were lynched 
from 1882 to 1968. African Americans constitute one million of two to three million in, of our incarcerated population. We've got to wake up as a people. Amen. Amen. And over the past 35 years in America, an estimated 324 blacks have been killed at the hands of other blacks. We often talk about how our law enforcement are taking our black men out, but we can see from the statistics that we're taking out each other far more than the police officers are. Next pioneer, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was famous for his I Have a Dream speech on August 28th of 1963, calling to an end to racism and jobs during the March of Washington. His civil rights movements, his speeches on all men are created equal. He helped move the fight to the voting rights. He was instrumental in the three Selma marches, walking a 54-mile, 87-kilometer highway from Selma to Alabama State Capitol, Montgomery, showing a desire for African-American citizens to exercise their constitutional right to vote. They walked 54 miles. Mm. We can't even get people out to the polls to vote. We can't even get people to register to vote. All of the people that I name, they die for us to have that right to vote. Without your vote, you have no voice. Without your vote, you cannot complain. Without your vote, you don't have any rights. You better say that. Did they all have to die in vain? Dr. King was also assassinated on April the 4th, 1968 at 6.05 p.m. while standing on a balcony outside the second floor room at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. Blacks did receive their rights to vote. <coughs> when the 36th U.S. President, Lyndon Johnson, signed the bill into law on August the 6th of 1965. Our next group, as we move along in history, are the Black Panthers. I'm sure you all have heard of them. 